Hello everyone and welcome back to Painting with Martin. Today we're going to look at weathering effects and in front of you here we are actually um, actually holding uh, two models from coming here is the board game the Ukove expansion pack. It's the iconic panther tank, uh, German of course and as you can see it's a really good model and it's almost finished painting. I have only some tiny more details to do with it and it's um, in order to, to continue with the final details, I'm going to show you weathering effects. Weathering effects is a standard word for putting some dirt on the model, putting it through uh, some worn battle damage or something else. Uh, some people prefer to keep their models very fine and pristine. I prefer to give it a little more weather, dusty, uh, like rugged look. In front of you, you have pretty much the fully painted model. Uh, I painted it with a German grey. Uh, there's a video for that in the description box box below here and um, you can just follow it to look to make your uh, tanks look exactly like this now um, before we continue I just want to say that if you do like this video um, if you like what I'm doing please consider liking sharing and subscribing it helps my channel grow so I really appreciate that but uh, if you are actually looking to the tank I have to the right here this is a, a model that I have weathered. Um, it looks very, very worn, dusty, weathered. And I'm gonna show you uh, a few of these steps as we go along in the video. The first one we're going to take a look at is simply called um, putting some shadows on it. Normally I do this in the shading process, but I'm gonna put it as um, kind of like rain streaks. And for that, this one, I'm using a, um, a wash uh, or shade from the a uh, from AK uh, models called Wash Neutral Gray. Uh, it's a special wash for scale models, and it gives a kind of like a streaking look uh, on 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 the tanks. And uh, it's quite smelly, um, um, apart from other uh, shades. So keep keep in mind that you need good ventilation for it. So um, you take a very fine tip brush. In this case, I'm choosing a fine uh, two, like a, um, a size two brush. Any brush will do. Make sure that the bristles are actually really fine in this one. So. Uh, we're going to open up the paint bottle, and what you do here is simply, you are looking to get small streaks. Let's see if I can put it down. I'm going to put it down into here, so something like this. And what we're looking for is rain streaks. So you pretty much paint rain streaks like this. Don't worry, it looks very dark right now, but it will blend into the model really easily. Um, and you're looking for to make sure that it hits the surface areas. Uh, so you're not looking to cover the entire model with it. And as you can see, it blends in fairly easy. If you feel that it's too much, you can just cover it over with some grey paint. German neutral grey would be fine. You can continue this on the other side. Uh, you can even do it from the, a little bit from the side. Something like this. Very, very easy. Uh, it blends in quite well. And as you can see here, this is what it looks like when it's dried. So again, you can you can see like it's kind of like it streaked the uh, the the model very nicely, um, and that's one technique. You can use this. Uh, this color is really nice for that. So um, that's one technique. Let's move on to the next one. Next one is something that I've shared before, but I'm going to close my paint bottle so I don't spill it all over my desk first. That's something I strongly recommend that you do. Put it aside. Next uh, paint I'm looking for to get is something called uh, Typhus Corrosion from Citadel. It's a technical paint. It's very, very dark and grimy. So I'm using it for grime effects. So I'm opening it. And what I want here is putting it up here. It's very, very dark and grimy. It's like I'm putting a little bit of paint on my, on my brush. And... I'm looking to fill the creases with some, some grime effects here. It does, it's very subtle. Uh, you can brush it off with your hand or your thumb or even a piece of uh, cloth. Make sure leaving streaks like this. Um, I'm, I've looked at actual paint, um, like actual paintings or pictures of real panther tanks online from other scale models as, as well as real life. And you see the frontal plate here took particular damage. So I'm gonna put some streaks over here. A little bit here to this on, on the, 
the, the gun shield, I think it's called. And I'm going to kind of like see if I can get this like smudged over. So make sure you can actually see here that it actually looks a little bit worn and dirty. You can also do it covering here some of the tracks here. So kind of like dirt and dust and like mud has been like spewed over here. And you can even do so on the vents here, completely covering them here. Just rush, roughly brush, not too much paint on the brush. And it gives them a really grimy look like it's been in and out of battle for a long time. Now, that's that technique really well. You can, of course, choose any amount of this color that you want. If you feel that you covered too much of the shiny parts with metal here, you can even give them a little bit of a grimy look, which is nice as well. Make sure that they are toned over instead of using a wash. And the track links here, I like to put some grime in between these as well. Make sure that they're a little bit worn and dirty. Maybe they took a few hits. Maybe they haven't been replaced in a while. Maybe they've been out in battle. And maybe the, where everything where you can assemble grass, dust and grime. So here, like the the turret um, and the uh, the hatch here is also one nice area. You can put some nice uh, grime and dust. So this is what it looks like. Looks a little bit better now. You can see the rain effects are very subtle and it kind of like stands out. I really like it. I really like that effect. So that's the Typhus Corrosion method. I'm going to see if I can close this one. Oh, there you go. Um, before I apply the next uh, layer of, of paint, put a little bit of um, clean my, 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 my brush. Then the next effect we're going to put is called uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Riser Rust from Citadel. It's very, very strong paint. Use this very carefully. It's like you put a little bit of um, um, paint on the, uh, the the brush and just dab it carefully. Now see if I can put some more on it. Maybe it dried. So it's a very, very thick paint. So make sure uh, you use it with 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 care now let's see here I'll try a second attempt you just need a single tiny point like this it's very very subtle using the vents here and then you t what you do is you take a brush uh, a dry brush and just smudge it over very like kind of like a heavy dry brush Make sure that those areas stick. You can even do so in the front plate here if you want to. I'm going to show you how to do it. And you just give it a quick dab like that. And then you brush it over and you brush it into the smudge that you created before with the typhus corrosion. Gives it a nice worn look. You can also do so here with the tank trucks. And you just brush it over very, very quickly. Um, there are other rust effects that you can use from Vallejo and other, other uh, suppliers that are more fluid. That makes the effect a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier. You don't have to brush it over like this. But this is a nice and easy way, way of adding rust effects. Now on to the next stage. Next step is to simply um, add um, some, some chipping effects. What you take here is take a small uh, uh, sponge. And then you take your palette. And what you do here is you use, I use a color called um, uh, Vallejo Black from Vallejo. You squeeze it out, tiny dot, undiluted. You can use brown for this one as well. If you want to use the same chipping effect for, for example, uh, typhus corrosion, this is an excellent way of doing it. You take it here and you dab it in into the sponge. You can use it like a regular bathroom sponge as well. Make sure that this one is soaked in it. And then use a kitchen towel like I have here, or a napkin or whatever, and dab it across so make sure that some of the paint is kind of like gone so you don't cover all of it, the model in this paint. You can see how I'm dabbing it away, dabbing it away, dabbing it away, dabbing it away a little bit more, and something like this. We can do a little bit more here. So what you're looking for here is like you 
pretty much cover the model with this chipping effect. We'll be doing like very, very subtle, as you can see here, kind of like a little bit battle damage here, a little bit on here on the, on the armor plating. And you can use this as much as you want. You can use it with brown colors. You can use it with a little bit of typhus corrosion if you want. Kind of get these chippings effect very easily. I'll see if you can see this here, or if you can see it here on the other side. So that's one method. The next method on the same line is you take a small fine tip brush. You take black as well, or brown. And then you simply add some small chipping effects. Chipping effects are like this. You add small tiny dots where you think it might uh, the paint have been chipped away. Can move it here, maybe here on the edges that are nice. Very subtle. And you can choose to use it as much as you want. Uh, I like edges because it kind of stands out. If it's too much, you can smudge it over with your finger or a clean um, brush or a even a piece of cloth. So that's that. That's that technique. I'm not going to continue any further, but that's the way you can do it. Do it over here as well. Now, as you can see here, I've already dabbed over a little bit of uh, with a sponge. And we're going to show you how to add battle damage with that. Now, battle damage also gives you the optional effect of your... The viewers might actually think that the uh, model is made from metal instead of plastic. So I'm taking a uh, color here called Gunmetal Grey from Vallejo, or Natural Steel. I guess you can see that. And you simply take a tiny amount of this paint. Not much at all is needed. Take a small fine tip brush as I used before, clean before, of course, before. And you kind of like use it to give a tiny, tiny amount in that black. Kind of like the, it gives you um, like hint, kind of like a small illusion that this tank has been right hit by a projectile or a shell or something like that. Maybe an anti-tank gun fired at it might right hit it straight in the turret here, didn't penetrate. If you want to make sure that it was recent, then you can add a, uh, a thing, a tiny, tiny dot of riser rust right in the center of this thing. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want it in my model, but you can do so if you want to. And that means it was recent because you like the tank. It's like the shell is like glowing into this one here. So um, it's entirely optional, of course. And Finally, if you want to make sure that you see that, oh, it's a little bit too much rust here, it's like too uh, too heavy, then you can, very, very simple, use uh, a little bit of um, of, shade, uh, of shade, such as Citadel's uh, Null Noil is an example of this, or you can use um, a Black Shade from Vallejo. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use Null Noil because I don't want to spill over some jar, some some uh, some some wash on my palette very very like very very subtly um, cover this one area like this cover is over it's a very subtle effect and you can even do it on the other side here as well the um there's also a good weathering effect i've showed you before as to simply covering around the hatches, make sure they, they stand out, and other shadows as well. Not necessarily weathering. And finally, the final one I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna use a fairly worn old brush. And that means I'm using a color such as, say, a Flat Earth from Vallejo. Put a little bit undiluted neat on my palette. And that means I take it, I use it as a heavy dry brush. So if you use the dry brush, I'm gonna most, wipe most of it off on a, a kitchen cloth. And I'm gonna cover the areas where I think um, uh, it's getting muddy. So here along the tracks, maybe also here on the side of the armor plating, very subtle here, the lower effects, and as well here, here on the back 
where you can see that there might be some mud spewing up on top of these fuel cans. I think it's fuel cans. And that kind of concludes the weathering video. If you have other uh, other uh, tips how to weather, please put them in the comments. And um, let me know if you what you think about this video. Put the comments in the below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Otherwise, go and put those um, put some paint on those mid uh, miniatures. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.